In distributed systems, clusters are the backbone of scalability and reliability. A cluster is essentially a group of interconnected servers or nodes working together to handle large volumes of data and traffic by sharing the workload. Clusters are designed to distribute tasks across these nodes, ensuring that no single server becomes a bottleneck. They also add fault tolerance by seamlessly redistributing tasks if one node fails. Understanding clusters is essential for software engineers, especially when working with systems that demand high availability and performance. From managing databases and load balancing to supporting real-time applications, clusters play a pivotal role in modern systems architecture. So let's dive in and explore how clusters work and why they are so critical in distributed systems. A cluster is a group of interconnected computers or nodes that work together to act as a single system. Each node in the cluster performs specific tasks and together they handle large workloads by sharing resources. In distributed systems, clusters are essentially for scalability and fault tolerance. If one node in the cluster fails, other nodes can pick up the workload, preventing downtime and maintaining system performance. And there are generally two types of cluster configurations and distributed systems, leader follower clusters and independent node clusters. In a leader follower setup, one node in the cluster is designated as the leader, while the other nodes act as followers. The leader is responsible for handling most of the coordination tasks, while the followers carry out tasks assigned by the leader. For example, if the cluster is managing queue of tasks, the leader might be responsible for receiving all incoming tasks and distributing them to followers. This approach ensures a streamlined and organized process. However, if the leader fails, there may be a delay or disruption while a new leader is chosen, depending on the system's fault tolerance mechanism. Let's make this concrete with a practical example. Consider a distributed database system like MySQL with replication, which is commonly used in applications that need high availability and fault tolerance. Imagine you have a popular online retail platform where users are constantly browsing products, adding items to their carts, or checking out. To handle the heavy load of data, this platform runs a MySQL cluster where one database server is designated as the leader or the primary node, and several others act as followers or replicas. So here is how it works. The leader database handles all write operations, like adding items to the cart, placing orders, or updating user profiles. This ensures a single authoritative source of data changes. Follower databases handle read operations, such as browsing product catalogs or viewing the order history. And this separation balances the load, reducing stress on the leader. Followers regularly replicate data from the leader asynchronously, staying nearly up to date. For example, when an order status changes, followers receive the update to serve read requests with fresh information. And if the leader fails, one follower is promoted to the leader via a failover process managed by a coordination service. And this ensures minimal disruption to write operations. This leader follower architecture supports scalability by offloading reads to followers and maintains high availability with failover mechanisms. A real-world example of leader follower pattern is Facebook's use of MySQL. Facebook handles enormous amounts of user data and employs a leader follower cluster setup to manage it efficiently. In this architecture, primary database or the leader handles all write operations, such as status updates, comments, and messages, ensuring that data changes are recorded in a single authoritative source. The secondary databases or followers replicate data from the leader and handle read operations, like loading news feeds and profiles. This separation allows Facebook to efficiently manage high volumes of data traffic, maintain consistency, and ensure high availability of billions of users, all while minimizing the load on any single server. All right, let's talk about independent node clusters. Independent node clusters operate without a strict leader. Each node in the cluster functions independently to handle requests, often in a decentralized manner. So requests are routed to nodes based on availability or proximity rather than a central leader assigning task. This approach requires a different type of manager to ensure that tasks are evenly distributed among nodes. The different type of manager here is a load balancer or say an out cluster manager that operates outside of the cluster itself. It directs incoming requests or tasks to available nodes within the cluster, making the decision based on each node's current state or capacity. So this manager does not get involved in the internal functioning of the nodes, but rather ensures that the tasks are evenly distributed across all nodes. Apache Kafka is an excellent example of an independent node cluster in a distributed system. 
If you have checked out my crash course on Kafka, you are already familiar with some of these concepts. But let's connect it to the idea of independent node clusters. In Kafka, we have multiple brokers, essentially independent nodes, that handle streaming data. Each broker process stores and forwards data without relying on the brokers. Instead of leader directing traffic, each broker is responsible for its assigned partitions of data within a topic. Kafka topics are split into partitions and each partition has a specific broker assigned to handle reads and writes for that partition. This means that every broker operates independently within its own role. In Kafka setup, producers send data to specific partitions and topics and consumers pull data from these partitions, often spread across brokers. This distribution allows Kafka to handle huge volumes of data while maintaining high throughput. Kafka replicates data across multiple brokers and if a broker goes down, other brokers holding replica data take over automatically. This replication enhances fault tolerance and ensures data availability. Kafka also uses an internal consensus mechanism called the Kafka Raft or K Raft protocol to manage cluster metadata and coordinate tasks like leader election for partitions. This built-in protocol eliminates the need for external coordination services and streamlines cluster management. Kafka exemplifies the independent node cluster approach where each broker operates with a high level of autonomy and the cluster ensures that critical tasks like partition management stay organized without relying on external service. This architecture makes Kafka highly scalable and resilient, capable of managing massive data streams without a single point of failure. And if you're curious to dive deeper into how each of these pieces work, you might want to revisit my crash course on Kafka, where I have broken down these concepts in detail. It will give you a solid foundation on how Kafka leverages independent nodes to handle data streaming efficiently. All right, CDNs or content delivery network like AWS CloudFront are another great example of independent node clusters. They use globally distributed edge servers to cache and deliver content such as images and videos. The servers operate independently with no central leader, ensuring quick delivery based on user location. Global load balances route requests to the nearest or most responsive server, maintaining high availability. If one server fails, another takes over seamlessly, showcasing the power of decentralized systems. So, the in-cluster manager operates within the boundaries of a single cluster, for example, assigning leaders or partition tasks. Examples of in-cluster managers include Kubernetes, which orchestrates containerized applications, and Kafka's KRAFT protocol, which manage cluster metadata internally. If a system uses leader follower clusters, the in-cluster manager ensures leader election and task assignment within each cluster. On the other hand, an out-cluster manager operates across multiple clusters, focusing on mapping tasks, queues, or clients to the appropriate cluster without delving into the internal cluster operations. The out-cluster manager assigns tasks to clusters and ensures optimal utilization without worrying about how clusters internally manage operations. A typical example here is a load balancer. In a multi-cluster setup, it directs traffic to the least loaded or the healthiest cluster, balancing the load across clusters. To sum it up, in a distributed system, clusters allows us to scale our applications by distributing workloads across multiple nodes. The in-cluster manager takes care of the internal cluster management, while the out-cluster manager manages load balancing across clusters. Together, these managers enable distributed systems to achieve high performance, fault tolerance, and scalability. Understanding how clusters and their managers work is essential for designing systems that can handle large-scale applications effectively. By using these basic concepts, we can build robust and resilient systems capable of serving millions of users while maintaining high availability.